Hi, I'm Ethan Tucker of Hadar. Let's find out what appliances can be koshered for Pesach. Let's begin with a common appliance, the microwave. Like anything we deal with, you start with a thorough cleaning and then let the microwave sit for 24 hours unused. At that point, you take a cup that can be put in the microwave for long enough that you can boil water in it. Put water in that cup. Make sure you leave plenty of space between the amount of water and the top of the glass and run the microwave on highest heat until you see that the water in the cup or the glass is boiling and filling the cavity of the microwave oven with steam. Once that is happening, you can turn the microwave off and just let the water cool down. Once it's cooled down, simply take the glass, discard the water, and then you go ahead and use the microwave. Some people suggest that the glass or cup used to boil the water should then be moved to another place and you run the process again to make sure that the spot on which the cup or glass was sitting is also covered by steam. There are some components of the microwave that can potentially create some issues that you may want to think about. Microwaves that have a browning element create a different dynamic in terms of the way things are heated. Many people will not kosher something like that for Pesach. There is often some kind of glass or Pyrex tray at the bottom of the microwave that might spin the food around. And one common way of dealing with that is wrapping that in some kind of plastic. So you wanna be careful that you don't put something in the microwave that will ultimately melt or be damaged. And there are more lenient positions in terms of glass and Pyrex that may also be relevant, but you could also remove that tray and simply not have your food rotating in the microwave when you use it on Pesach. Another area of concern can be the kind of glass door that is directly on the inside of the oven's cavity. And so some people there will cover that with a piece of cardboard or something else that puts basically a gap between it and the food that's inside. Another appliance common in many kitchens and in many Shabbat observant kitchens would be the plata, some kind of hot plate, something that's used as a warming surface, which isn't really used for cooking, but does get food quite hot. So clean it off very thoroughly and very cleanly, and then run it on its highest setting for an hour. But because it doesn't really go quite to the high level that an oven might, another wise and traditional step to take is to cover the surface further. So take one or two layers of heavy duty aluminum foil, put it over uh, the hot plate, and then you're ready to go and to use it over the course of Pesach. The hot water urn. In principle, if the hot water urn has only ever been used for hot water, there's really nothing you need to do to kosher it for Pesach. But if you want to just be sure, you can fill it up all the way to the top, have it be at the highest setting that it goes on, dispense some water uh, through the spout, and that's enough to get the uh, appliance ready for Pesach. There are any number of other appliances in the kitchen that are just not able to be koshered for Pesach. Perhaps the most uh, obvious and dramatic is the toaster oven, an appliance full of crevices, full of breadcrumbs in ways that it's simply impossible to clean out and you can't really get it hot enough with direct flame to burn everything out the way you might with a self-cleaning oven. So something like the toaster oven just has to be put aside, and that's true really for all baking utensils in the kitchen. We just don't take things that we've used for bread, muffin tins, things of that sort, and kosher them for Pesach. We leave them on the side. Grills, barbecues, it really depends in the way in which they've been used. In theory, those things can be koshered for Pesach through the direct application of very forceful heat. So if you have a barbecue grill on your back deck, uh, if you take a blowtorch and you blowtorch all of the surfaces until they actually get hot, red hot, then you have koshered that for Pesach and it's perfectly fine to use it. 
If you're talking about something like an indoor grill that plugs in and gets hot but is not a surface you would ever actually apply direct heat to, that's not something that there's really a great way to kosher for Pesach and it should just be put aside. Other appliances that are just very hard to get clean and therefore to actually justify koshering would be something like a stand mixer. There's flour and other things that have caked up there in a way that it's impossible to get out. Immersion blenders can be similar as well. So with all of those things, it makes sense to have dedicated items for Pesach. In certain circumstances, if they're absolutely needed, there may be a way to use boiling water with soap to neutralize everything that's inside. That would be a case-by-case -case determination based on the specific appliance involved and its characteristics and the potential issues of need that have arisen. Try to keep front and center as much as possible really the meaning and motivation behind all of this, which is definitely both the technical cleaning of our kitchen and purging of chametz from our eating spaces, but it's also an invitation again and again, step after step, to imagine how we renew our lives at this incredible time of year when spring returns, when we feel life returning, and we're invited to lean into that life and to our story as a people once again. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Please check out our other videos in this series on preparing your home for Pesach. And don't forget to consult our rich library of resources on this and many other topics at www.hadar.org.